Yeah, so um, basically power mapping is like a tool that we use to develop like strategy and tactics for like a campaign or an issue or like a fight that we're trying to win demands for. Um, so I included this lovely photo of Jeff Bezos and um, Bloomberg and this Dutch um, designer or something, just to like illustrate that these people empower the, the capitalist class, the bosses, they have connections. Um, they don't need to do these exercises because they're already you know, in coalition together against um, us, the working class people. Um, so why, why should we make a power map? It's to put a campaign in context, like we recognize that there are so many different issues that we face on a day-to-day -day basis because of capitalism, but just being anti-capitalist isn't enough. We have to think through like, what should we devote our time and energy to, to you know, change the capitalist system and build working class power. And it's helpful to think about this in the context of like, who are organizations that are allies? Who is our opposition? You know, what, what are the specific goals that we're trying to um, win? And who has the power to implement changes to make those goals a reality? Um, yeah, so and this final bullet point that talks about finding organic leaders and getting them to join a campaign is just related to uh, the idea that like, we recognize that we're always going to be trying to bring people into DSA, um, but when we do a big campaign, like let's say Medicare for all, um, we're definitely trying to influence groups outside of us, maybe a union, um, maybe like a nonprofit advocacy group is working in coalition with us. Um, and it's really important that when we're trying to organize these other groups, we can identify people within those groups that are already trusted, because if we can win that person over, then they can win over their coworkers or uh, the people that go to their church or whatever um, group they belong to. Um, so kind of like step one is defining the issue. Um, and so when we think about an issue, it's important to think about like a solid concrete demand. Um, so let's think about previous campaigns Austin DSA has done like paid sick leave. Like we wanted every employer to provide paid sick leave to like people in restaurants, like whatever, um, whatever their place of work is, you know, they should have the right to stay home and still be paid if they're sick. Um, another one we did was defund the Austin police department. Um, you know, when the campaign started, we didn't have like a super, um, specific number that we wanted to cut the budget by that kind of like evolved, but the we had like a specific timeline of like okay the city council is going to be voting on um, the budget as a whole and we can use this time frame to like you know organize to win demands um, for for the city to use you know money that's going to the police um, to fund like housing projects like these hotels uh, that now the city council is gonna turn into like permanent supportive housing for the unhoused folks in Austin. Um, it's also important to think about like, is this issue and demand widely and deeply felt? Like our overall goal as uh, democratic socialists of America is to build working class power. And um, we think that this is a good like plane of strategy because we all have these same material interests that bind us together and unify us against this like capitalist class. So an issue like Medicare for all really resonated with people because, you know, everyone is subject to the same shitty um, insurance and medical system that doesn't provide for people and leaves people in debt. Um, and, you know, it's something that people can relate to and will activate them because they're like, yeah, yeah, this is an issue for me and the people I love. Um, yeah, so again, like when you're defining your issue or demands, we could be thinking about like, does winning this demand or working towards the demand build working class power? Um, does it help us build organizers through DSA? So when DSA decided to go all in for Bernie Sanders, like even if we didn't win that fight, we knew that we were gonna be like building organizers through teaching them how to canvas and talk to their neighbors and their family members and really like start to feel empowered to like actually engage 
with this political process and, and winning material gains for working people. Um, so kind of step two, once you have your demand, um, let's say the demand is to do a Green New Deal, um, then you need to identify who the target is of the campaign, who has the power to meet our demands. Um, and it's important when you think about who the target is to think about it as like a person or people, not like Congress writ large or city council, because effectively when you're thinking about your strategy and power mapping, you're thinking about what you can do to um, cause that person to do the action that you want them to do. So like, I'm just going to use uh, Leslie Poole as an example. Um, she's a city council member that we were not really sure if she was going to support the um, defund Austin Police Department. Um, but maybe, you know, getting people from her city council district to call in and make her scared that she was like not going to be reelected, or maybe a better example than would be like Jimmy Flanagan or something. Um, but basically thinking about like, okay, who actually has the power to say yes to this demand or no to this demand. And I think it's somewhat helpful to think about it as like if there's more than one person you're like effectively doing like separate actions for those different people. Um, you know, the thing that motivates and drives one politician maybe doesn't have the same value for trying to move a different one. Um, and you can think about it like not all targets are going to be politicians. It could be somebody that's appointed like um, Spencer Kronk. How do you organize actions to get that person to either to move or to like remove them from power? And that looks different if it's like an elected official versus um, somebody who's appointed or um, just like a business owner that has a lot of capital um, and can like control policy by, you know, threatening to you know, withhold investments or um, not bring jobs to the city or something. Um, yeah, and so basically when you're thinking about your winning strategy, you wanna think about like, what does it cost the target to say yes to the demands? Like, why haven't they already done this? Um, and what would it take? Like, how do we make them, I don't wanna say hurt. Um, what cost is so great that like, what disruption can we do that makes the cost of saying no greater than the cost of saying yes? Um, and so uh, let me think of an example here. Um, or maybe y'all can throw one in the chat. I'm sorry about that, y'all. Thank you. Yeah. So um, yeah, what is how can we like make make it cost more to um ignore us than than say yes to our demands and like um Maybe this it looks like people just getting in the street and you know doing protest actions every weekend, but sometimes that's hard to sustain. So when you're thinking about like whatever campaign and your demands, you have to also think about um, what capacity your organization has, and and hopefully you can identify some other people in the community that can work together with you. Um, I think this is helpful in just like visualizing. A, I think to the extent that people are just thinking about strategy and like what different actors are in the universe of um, whatever campaign you're trying to do um, is helpful. But um, yeah, this is like a visualization tool of what power mapping your campaign. So let's say uh, if it's a city council action and we're trying to move like this one last person, like maybe the most influential person is like, that city council member or that senator that has the power to vote yes to the pro act or has the power to like introduce a bill or um, has the power to you know stop opposing the worker union um, and then you know who are your allies they're also in favor that kind of thing i think i saw some suggestions to use like sticky notes and i really liked that um, but it's basically just a tool to help you visualize like what the terrain of your campaign looks like. Um, and then I, th I thought this was always helpful to include, um, hopefully, people that are new, people that are comrades and have been active in DSA for a while, like kind of the goal is always to be bringing people in um, to this like core of like organizers that are working on these issues. 
Um, and I think it's helpful when you're thinking about who your allies are, like what organizations to be working with that it's, it's you wanna focus on like bringing people in. So maybe that's like focusing on activists and supporters before you like engage with like hostile um, opponents of whatever your campaign is. Um, basically like talking to people that already agree with your campaign goals instead of focusing on like, I don't know, let's use the example of like defund APD. We're not trying to like get the police union on our side, basically. Um, that would just be a waste of our time and energy. Um, so I included some books here if you're interested in reading more about this. Um, I adapted this presentation from one of our other comrades, Seneca, and he based this presentation off these first two books. Um, and then I included No Shortcuts because it's kind of like our organizing Bible, I feel like, <laughs> and some really great like PDFs from Labor Notes. So if you would like, these will be uploaded and we'll share them with you. Um, but that is all I had for y'all. Do 